Welcome to Kingdom Reality, your gateway to deep insights into the truths and realities of God's kingdom. Dive deep into the teachings of esteemed teachers of God's Word as they illuminate the mysteries of Scripture, offering priceless wisdom and revelations. Our channel serves as a beacon of enlightenment, guiding seekers on a transformative journey towards understanding the essence of divine truth and purpose. Join us as we explore the depths of spiritual reality and embark on a quest for genuine understanding and spiritual growth, revealing kingdom realities. Thank you for your mercy. We ask that you stretch forth your hand and meet the needs of your people. Specifically and specially the ministers of the gospel that you plant in our hearts. A most powerful seed, viable, that will keep us in the race with focus and without distraction. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You may be seated. There's a scripture we consulted yesterday that I would like to begin the journey with. So we'll do 45, 50 minutes of Bible study before we begin to pray for the sick. Let's go back to the book of James chapter 1 verse 14 and 15. James chapter 1 verse 14 and 15 but every man is tempted when he's drawn in drawn away in his own lost and enticed every man is tempted when he's drawn away in his own lost so your lost has the capacity to draw you and all that Satan needs to do to get your attention is to display his products before your face he doesn't know which of his products will be attracted to you so but he has a catalog of products that he will begin to display until he finds the one that has a sensor that is compatible with what you are lost in for so what satan brings to the equation is enticement but the lost is yours are you there and lost has the capacity to make you close your and that's why it is written here drawn away are you with me now the my emphasis actually is in verse 15 because the moment the enticement meets the lost a conception takes place and for every conception that someone is carrying there is an allocated gestation period for the development of that conception so the bible says that when lost is conceived so there are two things that need to be in place in order for lost to conceive are you there the lost is yours the enticement belongs to the devil and then when these two items find compatibility a conception takes place and the conception needs to go through a gestation period the gestation period for man is how long what nine months the gestation period for an elephant is how long huh two years so the gestation period for what you are pregnant for is not the same the, you know the one you were pregnant for last year has a different gestation period from the one that you are pregnant for this year now the reason why god allows it goes through a gestation period is because you will have the opportunity to conduct an abortion at any time you change your mind 
But if sin is full grown, if what you were conceived of of has found maturity you will not have the capacity to resist it in the evil day that satan sets you up for the activity that will change your channel so if sin is able to take a hold of you it means that you were desperately in cooperation with the enemy to produce that fruit and that's why it is you'll be judged for it because you had the opportunity to commit an abortion you are not following me so I have committed several abortions. <laughs> the journey of a man that walks in holiness, this is the true journey of a man that walks in holiness. He begins his warfare the moment he notice, notices lost, even before the enticement comes. And in situations where he became careless and the conception actually took place he knows he has a limited gestation period so he goes and conducts an abortion may the lord give you the courage because i've been praying since morning since morning and i found out people were carrying pregnancies all kinds of that's why i introduced this scripture in order for me to give the people that are pregnant an opportunity to commit an abortion before the end of the service. Are you still with me? Yes, sir. I am weeping. This one I want to say now is out of a broken heart. A minister that I know, very powerful. Very anointed but uh, strange things happen and the way the strange things happened um, he now so one thing led to another thing a confession was was made to the strange thing hallelujah have you ever seen a situation where church members gather and the reason why they are gathering in a service is not to listen to the word of god they want to they want the church to close down that's the reason why they gather and the reason for this agitation was because someone did not manage conception issues properly there is an honor that jesus places on a minister of the gospel if he wants him to do uh, labor for him this honor should be pr preserved it should be protected this honor is what makes people listen to us even if our intonations are not correct because of that honor people will overlook it and say god god called him no. <laughs> may the lord give you wisdom to 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 protect that honor that's the reason why somebody will leave home and convert his CD to US dollars, hard end CDs, and give to you because there is an honor that God places upon you. So, what happened to that minister of the gospel is that God withdrew that honor. And the moment that happened, the same people that used to bring him money are the same people agitating for the ministry to be shut down. God will. May the Lord forbid in the name of Jesus. Yes. But these matters, 
normally result when we become careless with pregnancies. And there are many people in our midst that are pregnant right now. Today is we are in an abortion clinic. <laughs> this night, in the name of Jesus Christ. I, I pray we'll have that um, opportunity to really um, partake in abortions. Okay, let's push forward. Let's push forward. Um, this is a side comment. This one is a side comment that will um, justify our abortion adventure. That's why I had to call this scripture. You know, the Bible says that Jesus was tempted at all points. And I said yesterday that temptation is measured in points. So there are two things that I need to bring to our attention this evening. The first thing is what we call the points of temptation. And then the second thing, because we are studying Jesus' temptation, the second thing we are going to raise is what I call the principles behind Jesus' temptation. So, points and principles. The temptations of Jesus actually were bordered upon three principles. They were bordered upon three principles. So, if Satan wants to cheat you out of destiny, he makes these three points, these three principles hazy. So, before we go to the principles, that's where the depth is. Let's check the points. First of all, we might need to consult the book of 1 John, chapter 2, verse 15 to 17. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 to 17, the Bible says, Love not the world. Now, most of us sitting here are ministers of the gospel or quite established in the Christian faith. What is the meaning of the world that the Bible says we should not love? Are you here? Now, in order for me not to stretch us, but I would have loved us to interact at this point to ascertain if we understand what the world is. Because the Bible reveals that if any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him and I need to show you the consequence you notice the church at Ephesus had lost their first love and that was their only crime and Jesus threatened that he would spill them out of his mouth the reason is because the service to the kingdom of God requires perpetual sacrifice the kingdom of God will advance to the degree to which we are willing to sacrifice for that kingdom and the moment we are not willing to sacrifice for the kingdom of God the kingdom of God stops advancing sacrifice is not something that the flesh is compatible with so there's something stronger than the flesh that God makes available to us that makes us at home with sacrifice and that's love so at any point in time where the love quotient begins to diminish our works are no longer accepted. Because if we take love out of the equation, the reason why you are doing anything in the kingdom of God is human. Maybe you are doing it to get a title, you are doing it to get a position, you are doing it to become the leader. And those are mundane, corrupted reasons that do not strike a chord in eternity. So your state of affection of the Lord is what keeps you accurate in your work with him. I don't have time to build this matter and to show you the kind of things that happen 
when there's a decline in our love for God. I don't have time to show you from scripture the things that the devil will do to fight your affection for God. And these are desperate matters and serious issues. What is the world? We are pressed for time, so I cannot show you where it started. But it started from the book of Genesis chapter 4. The world is the only creation of Satan. You know God created us, created Takuradi, created this territory. Satan created the world. And I, I, just like I said, I don't have time to show us. Okay, maybe, let's, let's do it. Let's do it. That means I will add 15 more minutes to my preaching. Okay. Come with me. Let's go to the book of Genesis. I need to show you the origin of this matter. And then I also need to show you why it was John that received the alarm to warn the body of Christ about the world. Because you will notice that Paul spoke about the world four times and John spoke about the world 12 times. So the authority that has insight on this matter is John. Okay? So the man, the technical man that is doing perfectly well, can you just take me to the book of Genesis chapter 4 verse 16? I'd, I'd like to show you a foundation. Love not the world, nor the things of the world, the Bible says. All right. All right. The Bible says, and Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. If you understand the design for man, and very soon I'm going to show you the need for us to study the book of Deuteronomy. If you understand the design for man, the way man was designed, in the image and in the likeness of God, man was supposed to be an exp a miniature expression of God. A miniature expression of God. So he was designed in God's image, designed in God's likeness. The measurement for man is not man. And that's why you cannot measure your level of compliance in terms of your ordination. It is God that will give you your scorecard because it was in his image you were created. It was in his likeness you were created. You were not created to behave like man. You were created to behave like him. In fact, according to scriptures, the definition of living for man is existing in vital connection with God. Are you there? So we're supposed to live connected to God, live in God's presence, live copying God's examples. You know, the Bible says, be ye imitators of God. Well, we're supposed to, God is the specimen that we study and reflect. That's the meaning of human life. So Cain came to a point of, how will I call it? Irritation. He was irritated by the government of God and decided that he wants to set up an existence that was apart from God and Cain was the first man that came to this conclusion. Are you following me? Okay, now that you are following me, then I can tell you the origin of this. The origin of this situation is that Satan attempted to invade heaven to establish a kingdom in the third heaven. Then he was displaced from the third heavens. The vision he wanted to implement in the third heavens, he now found a man upon the face of the earth that was willing to partner with him to, inv 
to establish it on the earth. And that man's name is Cain. So the first apostle of Satan that was secured among men to implement the policy directions that will come from the heart of the devil is the man called Cain. How did Cain begin this implementation? He began by departing from the presence of God. That means I don't want to live under the laws of God. I don't, live, I don't want to live under the government of God. I don't want to be influenced by God. I want to be at liberty. I want to be delivered from God. And the city that he went to establish, because he left the presence of the Lord, and went to the land of Nod. Nod is the name of the city that he went to establish. It was east of Eden. And I don't have time to explain why east. Because there was north, south, west. He decided to go east. By the time we build the case of east, you will discover by the time we arrive at Genesis chapter 10, Genesis chapter 11, as men journeyed east. That's when they came up with a vision to establish in the city of China a city and a tower whose top will reach the heavens. I, I, I don't want to go into that. But it was east that he traveled. Uh, uh, um, where, was, where, do, where does the sun rise from? Okay. That's what the Bible calls the womb of the morning. Where the morning gives birth to the sun every morning. So I will not tell you the meaning of that because we are not talking about um, leave that matter. Come back to, to, to this. So he left the presence of the Lord. Decided to establish a city called Nord. It was east of Eden and then he dwelt there. Now notice this new civilization that is about to spring forth is a civilization that is going to exist apart from God. Are you there? Just hold that in your mind. Next verse. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bare Enoch. And he builded a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch. So this is the city I'm talking about. The civilization of this city, the concept, the policy of this city, it is established on the concept apart from God. So, God's laws will not exist here. God's ways will not exist here. God's principles will not exist here. Meanwhile, man was created to be a creature that cannot survive apart from God. The state of being apart from God is what the Bible calls death. Death does not mean the cessation of life. Death means existing apart from God because we were designed to function in connection with God. So a mutation was about to take place in the human race and this mutation was something that was contrary to the blueprint for man and the pioneer of this civilization the man called Cain. Did you get it? Okay. Let me show you some symptoms. Move. Next verse. Unto Enoch was born Irad. And Irad begat Mehujael. And Mehujael begat Methusael. And Methusael begat Lamech. Can we count the generations? Start from Cain. Cain. You are not following me in this matter. This is an investigation. See, when we investigate, there are a few matters that we bring into view. One of the matters is territory. Another matter is genealogy. So this is the family tree investigation. Because if we are, if we are going to establish a pattern, then we need to check across at least seven generations. If you count from Enoch and count to Lamech, that's how many generations? About six generations. So let us, we have arrived at Lamech, haven't traveled the ladder of six generations. Please, please, 
retain it in your mind that this civilization that was built was built apart from what? Okay. So let's find out about this man Lamech. Next verse. And Lamech took unto him two wives. So the pioneer of poly polygamy was Lamech. Now, oh, you are not following. Do you realize that when they left the presence of God to establish a new civilization, it took six generations before they could pioneer polygamy. So the, the, the effect of the government of God on their ancestor was still strong. Even though he had left God, it was still strong. They did not just go haywire. It took some convincing to do across the generations. So begin to see the full implementation of the idea that Satan had in mind. One of the ideas he had in mind was many women in, in a man's life. It took six generations to bring that out. The name of the first wife was Ada. And Ada means adornment. That which is made beautiful so that it can be attractive. Are you with me? Yes, sir. So when we are talking about lust, the reason why lust is possible is because of Ada. Satan can make something beautiful so that it's attractive to your soul. And this matter of Ada that I'm talking about doesn't need to be a person. It can be a movie, Z World. You know, we are trying to investigate a civilization that is godless. In that civilization, you are going to see a heightened and intensified um, 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 focus on pleasure to women. Hmm? Yes, the second thing you are going to notice in that civilization is attractions. Attractions that can keep you perpetually distracted from the promptings and the conviction of the Holy Ghost. I'm trying to tell us it is this city, this civilization, that in the New Testament, John now called the world. You get it? Now since you, since you got it, let me, let me leave it. And then take you back to my scripture for the evening. You already got it. Now, if we build from here and keep on reading, you are going to see branches of this civilization that began to shoot out. Took six generations to establish pornography and make it normal. After Lamech's effort, it became customary for people to have multiple women. Do you understand that? So it means one of the ideas of Satan has been fully implemented. It took a lot of convincing to bring them to that level. So when, when next someone tells you that in our culture as African people, we are polygamists, we are... No, it did not start that way. It was the vision of Cain that became our culture. So that thing Cain pioneered, he entered into a, a Shanti culture. That's what I'm saying. Hallelujah. Yeah. All right, so we got the point. This is where it all began. And by the time we get to the New Testament, it became a mighty system. It's just like the book of Judges. Many of you have studied it. In the book of Judges, you will see God. Hallelujah. Can you reduce the volume? Yeah, okay, good. In the book of Judges, you will notice something there. The ancestors of Israel had gone to be with the Lord. The great warrior Joshua had slept. An era came when there was no established system of government. 
an era came when there was no government that's the kind of era that Cain created no government no influence no dictator let's be free that's the kind of arrangement that now found expression if you study that book you will find out ten times in that book you will see Israel migrating away from God and I'm wondering in none of the times is the direction of migration opposite you know you know here that they were they were now loving God more they were always going like this and then God will raise a judge in fact when they go this way then they'll go into captivity then all kinds of captivity captivity so that they can learn what happens when you decide to establish this kind of government are you there yes, sir. so God now raises they will cry to God hey, have mercy. he will raise a leader the leader will come and begin to call them back to God he will now show mercy and empower this leader and they will fight and bring deliverance to the people of Israel and the moment they settle into peace again now so the question is why are they always going that way is because of the system there is no government that's how the world system is you might claim that is education you want eh? you want to become a civil engineer and you got admission in the University of Ghana that's what you claim that you want but when you enter into that space you will find out that there are many things in that space and the natural direction that the system is designed to take you is away from God meanwhile it's, it's education that you say you are looking for in the process you lose your virginity in the process you might even join a cult become a, a wizard all of that <laughs> Oh my god start flying in the night your spirit will project <laughs> to volta volta region <laughs> meanwhile it was education you say we're going to look for but choked into the systems of this world is the principle of the world system which is the vision of the founding father to make everything depart from God. Is that clear? Good, you got it. So I don't need to waste more time there. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. I need to ask us a few, few questions, especially ministers of the gospel. Because I realized recently that it seems, it may seem that my message is for ministers. It, maybe it may seem God. <laughs> is you were going to theological school so that you, you could get a theological degree that's what you said but from that theological college you now learned how not to be faithful to Jesus the strategies that you need to put in place in the practice of ministry that will guarantee that your support is paramount you thought it was a theological degree you were looking for but on the path to obtaining this degree you also embraced you see the thing about the world system is that nobody goes to a, a school to learn it because it is infused into human experience It's the same theological school that a certain person that was not a Christian went to, got a theological degree, but wasn't born again. In, in fact, he's not a Christian. And um, was teaching CRK in school, but the person is a Muslim. You might just realize that <laughs> there may be nothing in a theological school that can save a soul. You might. It, 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 when you're outside you think there's hope there 
And I'm not saying don't go get the education because I have it. Uh -huh. I'm just trying to tell you that it's only in Jesus that there's salvation. May the Lord give you understanding. <laughs> so, it says, love not the world, that thing that came pioneered. Neither the things of the world. So there are two things, the system and the things. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Next verse, verse 15, which is my emphasis. For all the things that are in the world, then he gives us a list of three items. This list of three items is what forms the points of temptation. The points of temptation. The first thing there on that list is what the loss that comes through the flesh. The lust that comes through the eyes and the pride of life. I will need to define what self is and what flesh is. We need a good definition of that before we make some progress. Because if we don't have this fundamental knowledge, it will be difficult for us to understand the discussion that Satan and Jesus had. It's high level discussion that has a premise, has a foundation, and we will need to understand the premise and we need to understand the foundation. If you are still with me, say, Amen. Amen. All right, so these are the points. Lust of the flesh is a point. Jesus, the Bible said Jesus was, was tempted at all points. So these are the points. The points are the things of the world. What the world is contained with are its things. And what are its things? Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and pride of life. Are you there? No. So we need to understand... Um, the definition of flesh because you see Paul saying making reference to flesh, 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 flesh throughout his um, delivery in the book of Romans and subsequently and so we have two matters there the flesh is the system that Satan puts in place that is perpetually opposed to the Holy Spirit Satan is saying, I could not stop you from giving your life to Christ, but I will stop you from knowing the Holy Spirit. And in implementing this policy, what he put in place to ensure that you are resisted from knowing the Holy Spirit is the flesh. So the purpose of the flesh is to ensure that the reign of the Spirit in your life is cut short. And it's one of the infrastructure that Satan has in place. Because unfortunately, humankind fell. So, our desires, natural desires and instincts, have a touch of this fall. So he can use these desires and instincts to manipulate us. And to cause us not to yield to the desires that are in the spirit of God. So the infrastructure set and put in place to ensure that we, we never become slaves to the Holy Ghost, which is God's intention. Flesh. You will not know how educated your flesh is. There are people that can insult without talking when they just do their eyes like this. <laughs> A full insult has been administered without that. Oh my God. flesh if you take me to a surgeon and they operate my stomach they will not find pounded the yam there because I did not eat it hmm? 
Is that true? Have you realized that you are capable, some circumstances and situations can trigger an anger that you yourself are not aware that is inside? You never ate the anger, but that anger can come out. Flesh. And there are tendencies you have under the influence of anger that you, you do not have as a normal man. It means that when you hit, enter into that entropy of anger, Satan can hack into your soul and cause you to do things under the influence of that anger. Satan may not find that compatibility with you until you enter into that energy level. Then he arms you with tools to become most violent. And you will think that that is you. No, you, he climbed through the flesh. You see, the flesh is a platform for Satan, just like your spirit is a platform for God. Are you still with me? Did you get that? Good. So that is flesh. And I don't want to leave you with a definition so that you relate with it cerebrally. No, this matter is not cerebral. This matter is organic. Then we have self. Self is a God. It's a God that wants to be raised that will not disallow you the opportunity of finding the lordship of Jesus. Whereas flesh is against the spirit, self is against the lordship of Jesus. So when we talk about the pride of life, it's a God. Though. It's a replacement for the lordship of Jesus. And according to the writings of Paul, we have an equation that I'd like you to keep close to your heart as we study. The equation is this, flesh plus self equals the old man. Write it down. Oh, you did not hear that. Please help me preach to your neighbor. Let it enter. Flesh plus self equals the old man. That's the equation. I'd like you to hold it. Because it is possible for us to claim to be doing ministry. But the organ that is driving that ministry is flesh. You are on the pulpit, but you still belong to the civilization of Cain. Ah. <laughs> I watched on social media. A Pentecostal church. I watched a video. Pentecostal church in Ghana. I think a pastor retired. So they posted another pastor to come and take over. Meanwhile, there were pastors in house in that branch that were supporting the senior pastor before he retired. So the congregation felt. And meanwhile, I don't know the circumstances under which this pastor from another parish was posted. You know, so they, there was a riot on Sunday morning. That we need to carefully ask ourselves if ministry was really going on in that location. Because what they call ministry there is powered by flesh. So they're on the pulpit, but the civilization that is running there is the world. Because the utensils of the world find application in that line of delivery. That's the <laughs> Jesus. Are you here? Yes, sir. Now, because you didn't respond well, I would have shown you the apparat, the, the barometer to measure your compliance. But when I say you, you say. <laughs> I know these are, these are very sensitive matters that uh, people will rather like a pastor not to talk about. But this is the heart of our faith. All right. 
Did you get the equation? Flesh plus self equals. The only use for the old man, according to Apostle Paul, is crucifixion. He cannot be modified. He cannot be approximated. He has been judged completely. And the answer that God has to all the symptoms of the old man is the cross. You will find a very challenging strategy in the writings of Paul. He, he calls it bearing the cross. The same way Jesus bore his own cross. Every believer will have to, if you are a genuine one, you will bear yours. Not the one Jesus bore, your own. That one is designed with your weight in view, with designed with your lust in view, designed with your experience in view. It is your own. And you are supposed to carry it. So what does it mean to bear the cross? You will always find the symptoms of the flesh seeking to resurrect. And the moment you find the symptoms of the flesh seeking to resurrect, you throw it to the cross. That means you deny it expression. You crucify it. It is giving you a prompting that it wants to show up. Just like if I walk to you and slap you now, the flesh will give you a calculation. That the number of people that saw you humiliated is 1,200. <laughs> and the way to respond, to restore your masculinity, is to give a left hand drive and you support it with a right leg. <laughs> The flesh is a good teacher. And when the flesh begins to speak, if you are not, if you don't know the voice of God, you will think it is you talking. He knows your language, knows your dialect. He normally speaks as though it is protecting you, your image, your dignity. But when you notice that voice, you are supposed to cast it to the cross. That means you shut down its possibility of expression. And if you are going to do that, many people around your environment, around your office, will call you a fool. A true Christian cannot escape being called a fool in society. But what you are doing is that you are shutting down. It takes courage to shut down lust. What normal people do is that they follow the tangent of loss. It takes courage to shut it down. And God puts it before your face every single day so that your compliance to Jesus, your love for Jesus can be tested on Monday, on Tuesday, on Wednesday, on Thursday, Friday. Then it complicates your matter when he now gives you a wife to marry. The whole idea of marriage is a setup to ensure to, to give you that marriage is the barometer I was talking about. You are not you are not fully <laughs> that will help you check how much advancement you have made in bridling the flesh. Yes. 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 You know what to do. You know that what you need to do now is to apologize, but it will take you 14 days. That's how strong the flesh is. And you can look pious, sanctimonious, and sacramental, but you are still deep in flesh. That means you, you have multiple entry visas to the, to the city that Cain has built. I know you, don't, you, don't, you will not like me saying, ah, he has come again with this. I'm just doing Bible study. Are you there? What you need to do to walk against the flesh is to apologize. But it takes you a lot. That's how strong the flesh is. And you will keep walking against it until he loses his dominion in your own life. That's when you can be called a spiritual man. You know what it means to crucify the old man. Anytime he speaks, anytime he reasons, anytime he suggests, 
you crucify him. That's the way of a spiritual man. It means you are part of a new city. You are not part of Cain's city. You are part of the new Jerusalem. You know, it was Jesus that said, ye are the light of the world. I know you remember that. But most of us don't remember that Jesus also said, ye are a city. A civilization that is set upon a hill that cannot be healed. That's the city I was talking about. It has no bearing in the creations of Cain. It has its bearing from above and from above only. Only this God can interpret his dimensions. That's what you are becoming. Now, you see, the promise that will be a new creation, are you with me? Yes. It's not, it's a process, not the result of your faith. You are becoming that new creation because there are still elements of the old man that still have authority in your space. Okay, you don't like that. I, I, I know when, when you are troubled. So, I spoke about the points of temptation. Lost of the flesh. So let's count these points in Adam. Genesis chapter 3. Genesis 3, 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for saw, that's loss of the eyes. If you are sitting close to a man that is matured, not a boy, a man, ask him, what did you see? I see. He saw no time to take inventory of powerful men and then you would discover that their downfall was traced to he saw now the Bible says there was a time where kings went to war the greatest king on earth he was on the rooftop of his house Come on. <laughs> There, there must be a vaccine that we will need to take to help sight. <laughs> and in my own work with God, I came up with a formula. There's a type of fasting that can break the authority. The pa you know, when you are in that situation where you are no longer in control of your eyes, have you been there? The thing just moves like that. <laughs> It means you have conceived something. The reason why the eyes are on their own is because of conception. The, the pregnancy is weighing down on the organs. When my wife was pregnant for our boy, Joshua, the, the stomach was so big that even the uh, doctor said, are you carrying twins? That's when I would sleep and wake up and discover that she did not sleep. Because the pregnancy, there are times when the pregnancy can control your eyes. That's what I'm saying. It's just you, you close it, but it's oh. <laughs> so there's a vaccine I want to recommend for eye issues. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Lost of the eyes. She saw. The tree was good for food and it was pleasant to the eyes. She saw that it was good for food, that's loss of the flesh, pleasant to the eyes, loss of the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise pride, pride of life. The points of temptation. 
In fact, before God can promote you in your spiritual journey, this is number three, the pride of life. <laughs> because a man that has not let go this number three, anything you put on him, he will squander it on that pride. Put an anointing on him, he will come and he will call himself Major Prophet first. <laughs> So he makes himself so visible that we cannot even see Jesus again. The reason is because there's a fundamental problem. He, he, pride. Pride will cause every resource that God puts on a man to be squandered achieving another objective. So a man that is proud cannot serve God. And they cannot is big letters. Cannot serve God. You, are, you think you are doing ministry? If Jesus, it takes some time to be studying the Bible, then you will see what God can reward. The kind of labor he can reward. So these are the points of temptation. If you are wise, like I'm trying to be, I'm not very wise yet, I'm trying to be wise. If you are wise, you will have a check on what your eyes lost after. If you are wise. If you are wise, you have a check on pride. A proud man cannot operate under any leader. He is the guy. The real guy. He's filthy in the eyes of God because he's worthless. He cannot be put to any task that God will accept. But he doesn't know. The pride of life makes a man blind. And puts him at a point where he cannot be corrected. You cannot correct a proud man. He's only good for destruction. So you set him up and keep healing him. Hey, you are, you are king. Ba, 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 ba. You, you are helping him to die. <laughs> set him up. See? Ranka Dede. <laughs> it makes him foolish. It makes him sell his destiny for a cup of pottage. It makes him unusable. It's like thorns. When you go to the farm and you find plants that have thorns, you skillfully, because they, are, they will cause injuries. That's how a pride man is. Before God can begin to commit real substance into your hand, uh, I know you know. Or I know you know. Have you seen brothers that looked pious sanctimonious before they got into electo, um, government offices they were elected as most of them almost end up becoming like wizards before they finish I don't want to go there are you with me all right so if we go back to Jesus, we are going to see the same points you will see loss of the flesh. He, he was hungry because he was fasting. And Satan said, attend to your flesh. Are you there? Pride of life. He took him to the pinnacle of the temple. And said, he will give his angels charge over you. Are you there? Then he showed him the glory of this world. Those are the points. So it means that there are three organs that are very powerful for a mortar. Eyes, heart, pride. And desire if we have time I will show you what desire has done to people
It was just one desire. So I want to be king. That's why so many people died. That's one desire. Meanwhile, those people would have lived if he was able to. Chef that desire. Meanwhile, they were not, they were not, they were serious. They meant it. Are you there? Yes, now they meant it because. As we were climbing in the spirit, irrespective of the consequences, so he's not trying. When I look back, those people are still alive, but right now they are not trying to die for Jesus, that's not their agenda. What makes a man suddenly experience a change of channel that he himself is not aware of? There are four areas of your life that if you take your eyes from, you become a demon without knowing. Come with me, let us study the Bible. I told you that the temptations were along the lines of three principles. So let us start with number one. I will do number one this evening. You study number two. And number three. The first principle, so I will mention them so that you know them and it will enhance your own study. The first principle is the principle of living. The temptation was built around the principle of living. We need to know your principle of living. What is the principle behind your everyday existence? The second principle is the principle of believing. Because if you believe wrong, you will live wrong. And the third principle is the principle of worship. So let's start. Number one. Like I said, I will do just number one. Go to the scripture I opened the other day, which we could not touch yesterday. Mark, Matthew chapter 4, beginning from verse number one. Um, who, who is in charge of this, this screen? The thing is showing, is it touch screen? So if it's not touch screen, look at the television or the screen that holds this and click on no there. It's blocking my scripture. The functionary in charge of this understand what I'm talking about. So, okay. All right, let's go. Matthew chapter 4. If you are still with me, say Amen. Amen. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, it was afterward and hunger. And when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. You will find out in this temptation series that all the answers that Jesus gave to Satan was from the book of Deuteronomy. And that's why I'm challenging you to go and read it. But I will not tell you why. I will not tell you why. All the answers were from Deuteronomy. If 
few things to note few things to note before i go into the matter few things to note uh first thing to note is that satan began by challenging jesus's identity if you are the son of god I would not like to draw our attention to the fact that this his designation as a son of God was a revelation that came from his father during baptism. It was an appraiser that came from heaven about the status of his life. It was a revelation of his compliance to standards and what his father was saying was that when we conception until Jesus showed up the father was saying this is my idea of a man Are you still with me? Yes, sir. Now, it was that identity that Satan came to challenge. Most of us sitting here do not even know your identity from heaven. But most of the warfares, the temptations, the trials that you are going to have in life is drawn from Satan attempting to challenge your identity there is a stage you will reach in the administration of the purposes of God that Satan will know your identity and that was why he was telling the seven sons of Sceva that Jesus we know Paul we know but in all of our data banks there is no record of you first question we need to ask is who are you if you can't answer that question then you cannot you don't understand the science behind your wars your warfares you don't understand the the mystery behind your coming from the family that you come from you don't understand why you are fifth born, why you are second born. For you, it was just an occurrence. But from the studio where you were created, it is a strategy. If you are the son of God, because Satan is hoping that you are, you are not sure. He's hoping that you don't know. He's hoping that you are forgotten. But if by any means you are the son of God, where I come from in the underworld, we have no acknowledgement of this your status. We have no acknowledgement of this your designation. I was strolling the other day and I heard people saying son of God. Well, we don't know this title. But if you are the son of God, there's one way to prove it. If it's true that there is an office that you have been given, there's a status that you occupy, there's normally power reserved for you to operate that office. The proof that you are in that office is that you have residual authority that you can you use to manage the office. Can you play, make demands on that office? It, it's obvious you have a need. You've been staying without food for a long time. And this is legitimate squander some of the authority in that office to turn these stones into bread there are many matters involved in this talk many matters 
first matter involved in this talk is that Satan was tempting Jesus to act apart from his father. That's the first matter. And that's why the emphasis was on his status. The emphasis was on his rank. Not about the system that he represents, but his status, his rank, his capacity, his ability. That was the emphasis. If we ask, can it be done? Without asking, should it be done? We are already falling. The fact that you have ability doesn't conscript you for engagement. In fact, in fact, as you grow in the ladder, one of the, those days, God will release serious anointing on your life and say, don't pray for the sick and don't lay hands. What he wants to see is, if you can be in order with power. <laughs> can you still be in order? Because most of us are likely to ask that if God didn't want us to use it, why did he release it? If you ask that, that kind of question, you are, you, are, you are becoming guilty of wanting to exercise yourself apart from God. And when you exercise yourself apart from God, he will back you up. Just like Are you here? Yes, sir. Have you ever heard this statement before? You cannot argue with proofs. You have heard it before? Have you read about Moses when God told him to speak to the rock and he, he struck the rock? Was there water? There was water, there was proof. But he was in disobedience. So I came to tell you that you can argue with proof. You can generate proof with the disobedience. If Jesus said you should not lay hands and you lay hands, things will happen. There will be proof. The only problem with that arrangement is that you will be disqualified. The hands you laid and the prayers you made, contrary to instruction, you made the prayers in the name of Jesus. He will respond to his name. But the man praying will be disqualified. Now, uh, you know, are you there? We have left that realm of measuring things by proofs. Because the greatest miracles that will be done will be done when the Antichrist comes. He will be a chief time of signs and wonders. Economic situations and war situations, security situations in the world that have lasted for an eternity. He will show up and he will bring peace in the Middle East. If you are looking for proof, the best of proofs you will see in his reign. Second matter that that discussion carried are you there if thou be the son of god turn these stones to bread satan was provoking him to prove that he was the son of god now um i know okay it's west african examination council so you know why If somebody comes and says, if it's true you wrote Wayek, solve this mathematical sum. <laughs> Meanwhile, Wayek has issued you the certificate. You don't need to solve the sum. In order for you to prove it, you already have certificate. So Jesus doesn't need to do anything for him to prove to anybody that he's the son of God. That means his ego, his pride was not going to be the reason why he will act. 
he was being challenged along the lines of the principles behind his living what is it that can that can motivate you to act say man according to Deuteronomy shall not live by bread alone so the first temptation is bordered on the principle of living Have you been touched by the message you just heard and you want to give your life to Jesus or you want to rededicate your life to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Then say this short prayer. Lord, I admit I am a sinner. I need and want your forgiveness. I accept your death as the penalty for my sin and recognize that your mercy and grace is a gift you offer to me because of your great love not based on anything I have done. Cleanse me and make me your child. Be faithy receive you into my heart as the Son of God and as Savior and Lord of my life. From now on, help me live for you, with you in control. Dot in your precious name. Amen. Congratulations to you. If you have just said that prayer, you are now a child of God. Look around you for a Bible-believing church and also ask Jesus to direct you to the church where you can continue to serve Him. Consider subscribing to this channel too, so that you'll keep learning the realities of God's kingdom. God bless you.